Have you ever noticed how right when we find out what people do for a living, we start to relate our experiences with that? Like if you find out someone's a lawyer, you'll talk about the law. Or if you find out someone's a dentist, you'll talk about your own teeth. And you mean it too. You'll get right up in there. I have a feeling. <laughs> you think going to the dentist gives people anxiety. Try seeing the look on their face when you tell them that you're a high school math teacher and seeing the look of horror as they relive their own experience. When I tell people I'm a high school math teacher, they'll look right at me and they say, ugh, I hate math. And they'll make eye contact too, like it's my fault. <laughs> so when people say that they hate math, there's always this tension underneath their voice. I've heard it so many times that there's even a tone of inadequacy underneath, and that doesn't need to be there. It's become my life's work to understand how and why people arrive to that reaction, and tonight I'm gonna to share with you the solution for it. So, before we do that, let's back off the classroom math stuff. We don't have to be mathematicians to simply be aware that the language of math describes our universe. It unlocks all the doors to the technologies that we enjoy every day. There is a beauty to this. So we arrive to a contradiction. We're now saying, ugh, I hate something. Yet, deep down I know it's beautiful. The word algebra comes from Arabic origin. The literal translation of the word algebra is to restore and to rebalance. Let's think about that. Every single action we take in our lives is in an effort to restore and rebalance ourselves. There is a beauty to this concept. What this means is, it's not the math itself that we hate. We hate that we don't know it. And that's what I try to tell my students. So, after years of seeing people cringe, I started to wonder, what sort of torture chambers are people learning math in these days? And we come to our term. It is an actual term. If you type in math anxiety on Amazon, you'll find a long list of books on the topic, such as Overcoming Math Anxiety, Conquering Math Anxiety, Mind Over Math, <laughs> and of course, The Mystery Caper, Secrets, Lies, and Algebra. <laughs> Will Tess find the solution? <laughs> That's in the subtitle there. <laughs> and we all know where math anxiety comes from. It comes from poor teaching. It comes from negative experiences with teachers. It comes from family members who try to help but don't know how. It comes from the high cost of tutoring. It comes from an educational system that's budget slashed and outdated. But more than anything, math is hard for people sometimes. And given all these reasons, and the pressures to succeed, this creates anxiety in us. And that anxiety creates a real physical reaction which alters our brains. A recent study by Stanford University's medical school has confirmed this. The study says that increased activity in the fear centers of our brains directly reduce functioning in the numerical processing regions of our brains. In other words, when the fear centers of our brains are active, our ability to process numbers virtually shuts down. And does this not make perfect sense? Because can you imagine ever in our evolutionary history, you're running away from a saber-toothed tiger. You're running for your life. You're scared for your mind, like scared out of your mind. And being able to stop at that point and say, I know my times tables and can recite the quadratic formula by heart right now. That connection in our brain was never made. I keep having this image, honestly, of this primitive man in the jungle hiding behind the tree from the saber-toothed tiger approaching, scared, being like, oh my god, I think he sees me. I think this is it for me. Mm, yes. Hello there, tiger. The square root of 81 is 9. For some reason, I got the Ken Robinson accent. I don't know why. <laughs> but. Anxiety, it has a very clear evolutionary purpose. It keeps us alive. But that very same anxiety is what inhibits our brains from performing uh, 
high-level math functions because it releases adrenaline in our brain, right? And that's, the, that's what stops our brains from functioning. And so many students everywhere, every day, walk into math class and start to feel those physical manifestations of anxiety and they don't even know it. And it's unfair for us to expect our teens or any student for that matter to go against our own wiring and perform complex math equations when we're feeling like we're being chased by that tiger. There's a term for this anxiety. It happens in the classroom all the time because the consequences today, the consequences today are much worse than being eaten by the saber-toothed tiger because students today have to deal with the much more terrifying concept of what they have called blanking out. They are so terrified of getting the answer wrong in class that their minds freeze up. They're so terrified of looking bad in front of their friends that their minds go blank. So with you tonight, allow me to demonstrate what one of these blank outs looks like in class. Okay, everyone, good morning. Who can raise their hand and tell me if the number 24 is a perfect square? Oh, 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 yes, David, please. Uh, oh. Oh, 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 I had this one. I had this one. Oh, oh. Calling someone else. It's okay, David, you know, maybe next time, you know, maybe someone else. Anyone, don't, don't be shy. Yes, Sarah, please. Mr. Dude, I don't understand anything. <laughs> okay, Sarah, well, can you at least tell us what a perfect square means? Um, you mean like a number times itself? Yes, very good, a number times itself. So is the number 24 a perfect square? Um, no. Okay then, Sarah, what don't you understand? See, this blanking out, this anxiety, has real implications and real consequences, right? This is from the OECD. You can see United States abilities as below world average in math. Another figure from the National Science Foundation stating that 80% of jobs created within the next decade will require math and science skills, and that's not necessarily including those jobs that have a minimum of a math placement test or an entrance exam. It's such a crucial field, which is many times the last roadblock to people meeting their career aspirations and their dreams. So we come to a crossroads. Imagine there is this magical land, and this magical land has a name. The name of this land is Math Success. And all of us are standing at the door together, and we want to go in, but there's a door. And the inscription on the lock of this door reads, first, conquer the anxiety. It's now a human issue. We're talking about real people. And so suddenly, it becomes so clear. If real people need help learning math, why not create videos of real people learning math? And that's what Yay Math is. Yaymath.org is a completely free online video collection in which I film my math classes directly in our classroom. Many times, we'll dress up in fun math, uh, fun costumes, and those costumes have given life to fun math characters. So, whereas before we only had mathematicians, now we have mathemagicians. Whereas before we only had mathematicians, now we have mathemagicians. <laughs> and out with the mathematician. In with the mathemagician. <laughs> For real. You remember the Stanford study that says, when our minds are scared, we can't perform math. So I started to ask myself, what could I do to alleviate my students' stress and not make them feel stupid in front of their friends? I'll beat them to it and dress up as a chicken. <laughs> because if anxiety and fear equals no math, then laughter and fun equals yay math. Right? And that's what we're doing. This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be unscripted. 
It's supposed to be genuine and, and uh, authentic and informal, all towards the ultimate goal of enabling math success for everyone in the world. So let's make that goal very clear. Yay Math uses humor and positivity to conquer long-standing fears of math in order to enable math success for everyone in the world. So here are a few snapshots to give you a feel for what Yay Math is. <laughs> this is not going to work. Where were they still going? I am the mathematician. <laughs> so that's what's going on. Today we will be doing operations with radical expressions. Are you ready, filming. class? It's not filming. Oh, it is filming. <laughs> the magic is happening before your eyes. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got the money. Oh, let me hear you one time. Yay, Matt. Yay, Matt. Question already. Love it. Go. Yeah. What is a trinomial? Trinomial. What is a trinomial? Good. Raise your hand if you think you know how to factor well. And I'll do a survey. No hands. <laughs> Wait. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. And like I said before in previous lessons, I recommend rewriting both equations. So I'm going to rewrite the second one. And I'm going to rewrite the third one. Let's go for it. Second one. Elevator. The king doesn't use the steps. <laughs> Thank you. So let's talk about how this started. Some years ago, my classes and I, we started to realize that we're having a lot of fun during our lessons. I'm truly blessed to do what I do. Education is a calling for me. I think students are awesome. And I know that they can tell that I love what I do for a living. So that sort of mutual energy is very tangible. That's, you can't fake it, it's very real. And so the conclusion was that energy could not be contained and had to be put out there so that more people can benefit from it. And that's the draw that anyone watching anywhere in the world can instantly teletransport directly into a real live classroom experience that's also of high quality and what I mean by high quality is that it has students. The students are the ultimate collaborators. They are perfectly qualified to ask the exact right questions. And they know that the questions that they ask in class may be the same questions of literally thousands of people that are watching all over the world. And if they feel comfortable enough to ask that question, they too invite the audience to feel equally as comfortable. What a sense of purpose for them. All of a sudden, math class turned into helping thousands of people that you can't even see. It's such a human issue. I truly believe that since we're all human beings, that the learning process should be just as much about the people learning as it is about what we are learning. And I'm going to confess, honestly, this started out as an idea, as something fun, high quality to create and put out there to help my students and maybe other high school students who needed a little help to brush up on stuff. But it has taken on a life of its own. We talked about how math is the only universal language. So it's not just studied by people here in high school. It's studied by people of all ages, all over the world. At most recent count, Yay Math's Facebook page blazed past 5,000 friends. It just passed 52.55 before I walked up here, I checked. 50. That's, I mean, that's testament, to, that's testament to people are really being benefited. And the fact is that it's taken me on a journey. In many ways, I feel like I'm along for the ride. And it's opened my eyes to a whole new world that I never before was aware of. A mother of two in her 40s going back to school to get her associate's degree, but spent a total of seven years in the process for the single reason that she had to drop college algebra three times. She tried the campus tutors. She tried a whole array of online packages and services out there. None of them took, even the ones that you pay for. They didn't take until she finds Yay Math on YouTube in preparation for her exam. She watches videos for four straight weeks and then ends up passing the class with a B. 30-year-old Afghanistan war veteran 
and lists in the army when he's 18 years old, goes multiple tours of duty, comes back when he's 30. His passion is to become a paramedic. That's the next platform of his career. Now think about it. If you were 18, and the last time that you did math was 12 years ago, and then you, did, you had all the experiences that he had, and then you come back and you had to take algebra for an, an entrance exam, probably wouldn't remember very much. But he finds the math online, watches videos, prepares him, and he passes his test. Grandmother in Wisconsin watches Yamath to reteach herself algebra, uses that information to tutor her grandson. If you're ever in the mood for a brief, quick buckshot of inspiration, just go on the Facebook page and just read. That's, that's all I would ask you to do. Story after story after story of people meeting their needs, rising, climbing their own mountains, conquering that anxiety we've been talking about, and doing so while feeling good. Okay, I'm gonna end with this thought. I had the privilege of growing up in a generation that has witnessed how technology has transformed, how, how it transforms people's lives. For example, when I was in high school, I didn't have any online to look things up. For example, one of the comments on YouTube, one of the comments that's frequently recurring, goes like, oh my God, where were you when I was in high school? And I look at that and I was like, probably in high school. <laughs> See, the old model, the old model is to bring as many people into the high quality classrooms as we could. But now, with technology and social media, the stuff that Chaim was talking about, we can bring the classroom, high quality classroom, into the homes, living rooms, desktops, iPhones, iPads of people everywhere around the world. Right? This is, we're on the verge of something very, very special because universities have put out their podcasts, but nothing like this has been done on a high school level. So final thought is, it's true that technology can bring yay math into people's living rooms, but the fact that it works to benefit people's lives has truly brought it into their hearts. Thank you very much.